Hello. God, fucking damn Welcome it. to Eric Needs Content, apparently. Uh, That's what this is, Eric. <laughs> as a stream, this is going to be piecemealed. And I think that the individual pieces are going to go up as videos. We'll see what happens. Right now, though, we're at the Yog, where I guess I get to play, since there's only the three of us right now. So, who do people want? I want the emo guy. Okay. That is? Uh, I don't know. Give me the red girl. Red. And I suppose I'll take Green Hat, and we'll see if the Yogg manages to survive this. Nope, it undid everything. Wrong keyboard. <laughs> you have two keyboards? I have two he computers! Has two computers! That's so many. It's- The Yogg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives, week by week, unaware. Okay, first up is green. As oh, you can I have seen this before, okay. I have no control over the game, but I do have the enter button, and the, and the controller moves these. Excellent. Alright, so each of these various pieces and places will basically increase a stat, or two stats, a little bit. And sometimes something will take away from a stat, normally an event that occurs. The goal at the end of the game is to have enough stats to where you can be useful whenever everything goes to shit. I do not, however, remember what anything does. And I cannot see part of the screen because there is a thing in the way of my physical monitor. So, uh, green came first. Let's just go ahead and go to the tavern, because this looks like a tavern kind of guy. But you have no wealth. Space bar. Circle button. Square, but it's square. Why is it square? <laughs> Ew. Uh, let's go ahead and just fucking bark and. Ah, uh, Caleb, you, you want to you keep being narrator? You spend the week seven drinks at the tavern. You earn one wealth and tips and gain two charm. One day, a bard pulls out his lute in the bar, and sings, and starts playing a tune. That's not the word you said. Unfortunately, his singing is horrible, and ru is ruining the tavern's atmosphere. He decided to do something about it. Loot duel? No, that's bad, but yes! You, you challenge him to a loot duel. You borrow the bar owner's loot and challenge the bar to a musical duel. You only just started playing the loot when you realize you're even worse than the bard! Makes sense. The bard easily outplays you and motions you to lay down your loot. You can tell that there are a couple of people snickering at you right now. Embarrassing! You lose one charm. At least he tried. Now we are at red. Red, red. I don't know what she looks like. What does she look like? Uh, uh forest. forest? Angelica what? Skyler. You think she looks like? Go to the arena. Go to the arena. I was saying what they looked like and moving the little character icon into the center oh. of the screen. <laughs> oh, then go to the forest. To the forest. She has a little headband. I think she's a druid. Chop some wood. What the fuck? You spend the weekend cutting down trees for the village. You gain two physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day, you stumble upon a tall, nicely trimmed hedge in the middle of the woods. You sit and eat your lunch in front of the hedge, wondering what exactly it's doing out in the woods. Suddenly, an enormous hand erupts from the foliage. Got it. I will like, say, what? physique, <sighs> finesse, your stats, they come into play with the thing you decide to pick. So like this one's probably related to your physique, and this one's probably related to your finesse. And then it probably goes off of a random chance, blah blah, to determine it. You're right. That's how this game works. Ah. So would mine be your wisdom then? Or would magic be your wisdom? Magic is like and stuff. Right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. What you gonna do? This random hand just shot out at me. He's trying to punch me, so I might as well punch it back. Punch. 
You try punching the hand, but your blow just glances off of it. It's literally a hand. The hand then grabs you and pulls you through the thorns of the hedge. You lose one physique. The beast drags you all the way back to its lair and chains you up to a wall. You actually found one of the bad endings, like, immediately. Yeah. It starts peeling layers of your flesh off of you, eating it in front of you. Stream me. Then he waves his hand, regenerating the flesh on your body. The cycle occurs for what feels like years. The mental torment you under undergo is unbearable. You lose three mind. Is there any way to avoid this? The Not going to the forest. The of healing spells infuses you with raw magic. You gain three magic. One day the beast lairs attacked by another monster. You take this opportunity to escape. You push through the hedge and back into the forest. When you finally arrive home, you've learned that you've only been gone for a day. Yellow. Don't do that. Don't you do know, that. That's crazy. Uh, I would like to go to the alchemy tower. The alchemy tower? I would love to brew a potion. Potions? You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day while in the tower, one of the alchemists asks you to watch his potion while he's out. Soon after he leaves, the potion begins bubbling out of control. If you don't do something soon, it'll explode. Oh, I'm not gonna drink it, because that sounds kind of stupid. So I'm gonna throw it out the window. Toss. You toss the potion out the window and watch its contents empty into the town's water supply. What have you done? Quick thinking! You gain one mind. You take off early for the day, hoping nobody finds out. They say the last time I came, the Yog devoured houses whole, stole lives, tore families and family members apart. But that was so very long ago. My turn again. To the slums, I suppose. To make yeah, back no my money. You spent the week performing petty theft. <laughs> you gained money. one wealth and two finesse. Over the course of the week, you notice more and more people seem to be growing extra limb. Weird. It's a little disconcerting to see. One day you figure out why. You notice that while a man is drinking from the river, the leg growing out of his back is getting bigger. Yuck. You make a mental note to never drink the river water. You gain one mind. There's been no I'm... downsides <laughs> to me throwing it through windows so far. Just more oh. arms and legs. They can just do more things at once now. Bunch of gene stealers. Red. Um. Go back. Go back to the forest, ladies. I'm not going to go back to the forest. That's a bad Scary. idea. I don't feel like doing that. Uh, regret. Let's go to the garden, I guess. To the gardens. I'm very close to the forest. I've lost my mind. I don't. I probably should meditate. Meditating? By staring at the landscape. So yeah, landscape. Land landscaping. Landscape. Okay. I've given up on you my mind. You spend the week man maintaining maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one fez s one physique and earn yourself one wealth. One day on your way home from the park you came across a golden ring in the grass. Huh. Put it on Thaddeus. It's just my size. Let's wear this ring. Upon placing the ring on your finger, orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the rand. <gasps> the markings unravel themselves into the ring and swirl in front of you. They form into what appears to be a fully armored ghost, radiating a beautiful orange light. Lord Sour. Ooh. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. Dot dot dot. 
charm. It looks good on you. You gained one charm. Hooray. Yellow. I'm not used to no not way. being yellow, so stop me if I gotta do something. Hospital. Hospital. I would love to tend to patients. Feeling a little guilty, are you? No. You spent the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind and earn one wealth. One day, a patient whose voice has been cursed and replaced with piano notes will not stop talking. All the other patients are complaining that his voice is making the hospital even more depressing. The doctors have tried convincing him to stop talking, but to no avail. Sing with him. You start trying to sing along with his voice. You try to sing along with him, but just can't hit the right notes. That sounds right. His voice gets progressively sadder and sadder. It starts driving you slightly mad. You lose one mind. It was on us in a heartbeat. Or so the stories go. The earth shook. The air went still. Back to green. Uh, the death theater degree to good work here today. Let's go me. Yes. To the arena. To fight. You spend the weekend fighting brutes in the arena. You gain two physique and one finesse. Thanks, Mario. While wandering around the halls between matches, you spot your former lover, Kelly. An awkward exchange happens, in which you want to know how they're doing without seeming to care too much. After a few minutes, John, one of the most popular fighters in the arenas, butts into the conversation. John. Hey, go. Kelly. <laughs> No, I got a voice text. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got to leave right away if we want to make it to your mother's in time. You say an awkward goodbye as they walk off, holding hands. How do you feel? Good, good, good for them. You feel as good that both of you have moved on. This encounter, despite his awkwardness, was refreshing. You gain one charm. Thaddeus now has a character that can die. Fred, where you want to go? Ooh. Uh, go to the alchemy tower, I guess. There's the tower. Stay out of my tower, the fuck. My tower. I'm gonna brew a better potion. <laughs> These are all gonna be the same if you want to start skipping and once we've read them. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, an artificer stops by for a visit. He is adorned with magical gadgets and gizmos, and is followed everywhere by her clockwork spider. The alchemists of the tower all go out of their way to impress the artificer, offering her an array of potions and elixirs. As she's leaving, she adorns the most charming of the alchemists with the special trinket. The fact that she didn't choose you was a very humbling experience. Mm. You gain one charm. Don't even get the second choice. This is all right. Uh, I don't Take me to the palace. To the palace. I'm going to attend the ball. You spend the week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and one finesse. One day the court jester approaches you. Would you like to learn to juggle? He asks excitedly. I'll teach you everything I know for a small sum. Sure. You spend the day with the jester practicing your juggling technique. You improve dramatically. You gain two finesse. And you gain another two finesse. That's pretty dramatic. You happily pay the jester for his services. 
one shilling. That seems very the, worth it. And then the world was a howling fury, chaos, screaming, the sound of all we knew being pulled in half. You yeah, learned to juggle. Were you so profitable? Okay. Let's see here. What do I got? Have you ever tried fighting a bear with only a bunch of firewood that he's got to throw that shit in the air and catch it and smack him? Hmm. Is throwing it in the air a necessary part of that? Yeah, gravity. Uh, I thought it was to scare them off. Light with tinderbox. Light is copying me. Fancy gathering, two charm, one finette. One day you hear somebody shouting something in the hallway. There's a bomb in the palace! They scream. I don't know about bomb in this setting. <laughs> There's a bomb in the palace! There's a mass panic as people are trying desperately to escape the palace's like walls. Fans. It does. Don't worry, I got this. <laughs> you run deeper to the castle. Be smart. <laughs> trying to figure out where the explosives are hidden. He managed to find them in the wine cellar, disguised as a barrel of wine. The bomb appears to be on a detonator that is controlled by a powerful magic. That's unfortunate. And that's not how bombs work. You realize immediately you won't, that you won't be able to figure it out and get out of the building as quick as you can. You're almost out when the bomb goes off. There's a huge explosion that knocks you through a wall. You lose one physique. That is unfortunate. Fucking Did magic the bombs. Is <laughs> the palace is fucked up now. It blew up. The fucks. Oh, is it physically? Oh, it is. It blowed up. <laughs> yeah, blowed up. Hmm. Let's go to the ta arena. Tarina. Yeah, Tarina. I think I knew a girl named Tarina once. They have a very unique name. Compete in a fight. Fight? So do you, Thaddeus. Brute. Fight. Punching. Physique. Finesse. One day, in between matches, you stumble upon one of the higher rated fighters ingesting illegal strength potions. Please, miss, don't report me. She cries. I'll even share some of me potions with you if you keep quiet, she adds. Hmm. Well, what is it, Thaddeus? Are you a narc? Of course not. Plus, I'll give me some potions if I say nothing. So I'll say nothing. So take her offer. Take her offer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for not reporting me, she says while handing you her flask. You take a small swig of her potion and can feel your muscles expanding significantly. You gain two physique. Ooh. Yeah, love. No oh, shit. Uh. Just blew up the palace. Up there. Blow it up. I didn't do shit. But I do have ten for the nest, so let's go to the slums. To the slums. Just pit pocket some motherfuckers. Get some money back. Spend the week performing petty theft. You gain one wealth and two finesse. One day a woman in a beautiful but tattered dress comes up to you with her hands outstretched. She looks extremely familiar, but you can't quite figure out who she reminds you of. Ignore her. She walks away, clutching at his stomach. I'm reading the text right. Yeah, you are. <laughs> the next night you notice her and she looks very weak. You feel not that bad because morals are for losers and narcs. You lose one mind. That's fine. It's also the consequence of not having morals. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once more rebuild? move on be strong or have we forgotten i haven't forgotten shit thank you very much 
Oh, blew up the palace. Time to go get drunk. Drink! Yeah, you well for charm. on this. One day, I forgot to tell the sister about the fuck tables. She offers to read anybody's fortune for a small sum. Sure, why not? The fortune teller takes your hand and begins showering you with promises of love and wealth. She doesn't really go into any detail, and the whole time you can't help but feel like that this is all an act. Underwhelmed and slightly poor, you can't help but feel like you've wasted your money. That night, while walking home, the fortune teller runs up to you and gives you a kiss on the cheek. There's the love pot, she says with a toothless smile. And she hands you a giant sack of gold. There's the wealth, she says. You gain two wealth. Still think I'm a hack? Dot dot dot. No comment. I mean, Sandra. Um, the blown up castle. It's quite the view. So I'm I loaded up the garden and meditate. <laughs> meditate. Yeah. Just look at the castle, see what's going on. You spend the week in deep meditation. That's called napping. You're napping right now. <laughs> you gain one magic and two mind. One day you notice a woman watering the garden plants. Suddenly the plants sprout giant mouths. She is eaten immediately and they begin singing copyrighted music. No. The plants then uproot themselves and begin charging towards the denizens of the park. He managed to escape alongside everyone else. What do you do? We just escape. Just the weird black box Don't there. I feel like there's supposed to be another thing of text, but it wasn't there. What you got? Feed me. Let's feed the plants. Rally the town to fight. The Rally the town to fight. Come on. Nobody listens to a word you have to say. It feels wrong. Feed me all night long. What a blow to your ego. You lose one charm. The park is closed down for extermination. Great. <laughs> well, now I can't go. What the fuck, guys? How am I the one that's not broken anything when I threw a fucking magic potion into the water supply? <laughs> they just awkwardly have three arms. Oh, uh, well, I guess it's my turn back in the alchemy tower. I'm gonna clean it. Clean it? Clean it. Clean it. Spend the week cleaning up noxious chemicals. You're paid one welfare label labor and gain one physique and magic. One day you hear one of the alchemists shout Eureka! When you look over to see what he's done you spot a small, previously dead ferret come to life. I figured out the antidote to death! The alchemist cries. The undead ferret lets out a horrific noise and lumbers about slowly. Scree. Praise his accomplishments. That's amazing, you say, slightly discomfited by the Fred's presence. Gerg. You didn't hurt the alchemist's feelings. You gain one charm. The Yog. It's almost here. Almost. Are we sure this Yog thing is a real thing? We'll find out, ain't we? I don't know, the palace used to be real, though. I don't know. Just gonna bogart the tavern. What the fuck, man? Need my charm. One day, the tavern throws his annual dart tournament. There's a reason in the other games to copy this format, it's randomized. <laughs> Enter. Fair. You sign up for the dart tournament, ready to prove your dart throwing prowess. I have nine finesse. 
You play a respectable game of dice and end up coming in second place. It's respectable. I have that, well, it's respectable, though. <laughs> you win two wealth and I get a confidence boost. One charm. Hooray. I don't think anyone's gone there before. Let's go to the hospital. Hospital. Bitch, I went to the hospital. Clean up or tend. Just tend to the patients. Yes, you're a good doctor with your... Uh-huh. Eleven physique. <laughs> you spent the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mind mm. and earn one wealth. One day, while in the maternity ward, you notice a woman about to give birth. The baby she births is no ordinary baby, however. Does he have four arms? Its skin is pitch black and shiny, and its eyes glow like orange flame. The salamander. It's a shiny Charizard. It wrestles itself from the doctor's hands and tries to fly away. That's one of the dragon things. Never mind. Stop this demon! Yells the doctor. Demon. It's a baby. It's I you could use either or. You could use either or. Let's <laughs> use magic. Magic, magic. Fireball. Fireball. Yes. With a wave of your hand, you put up a magical barrier blocking the exit. The demon bounces right off of it and collapses onto the ground. Quick thinking. Gain one mind. The doctor runs up with a scalpel and quickly slits the demon's throat. Stream M A. Stream M A. It's just a baby. Your mouth goes agape as the doctor's merciless killing of a baby. A filthy mutant. He shrugs and walks away. Everyone's a mutant. Everyone has three arms Eric, or legs. Your comment is exactly why they had to make a special school for the X Men, alright? <laughs> exactly. This stream is sponsored by whoever wants to give us money. Please, someone give us money. And if you have giant uh, purple robot things that are weirdly ineffective, yet horribly effective, all the better. Exactly. Uh, you know what? I want to go to the forest. <laughs> to the forest. I got 12. I'm going to hunt. Hunt. Huh. I'm going to be hunting defenseless critters. You gain two possess. Possess mm -hmm. Uh huh. And sell the pets for one wolf. One night through the trees, you spot a group of cloaked figures, all standing in a circle. They are chanting in unison. Oh, oh mighty, mighty lord, lord of, of the, the night. night. Master, Master of beasts. beasts. Bringer, Bringer of pain and, and derision. And it's called derision, guys. That's pronounced derision. <laughs> derision. One of them runs from out of the darkness towards the rest of the group. Billy, everyone. I was reading the calendar wrong. He says. We were supposed to summon the demon yesterday. Now we have to wait a whole year to try again. There's a collective sigh as the group disperses. You learned a bit about demon summoning. Yeah. You gain one mind and one magic. The storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder. Drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. You see, the graveyard our home has become. Our home. Did anything yet live? Is it? Are we past star saving? Not starving? What the fuck am I looking at? Well, let's you see here. Roll. Yep. Got a lot of charm. I do, and that's basically it. So I'm just going to tell people what to do. <laughs> Makes sense. Mm. Take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You're so incredibly charming, everyone readily let you guide them. Ignore the fact I'm absolutely <laughs> dumb. You're not the brightest, however, and aren't terribly efficient with organizing everyone. Still, having a charismatic leader helps the rebuilding effort a lot. 
You got choices. Mm -hmm. I have choices. I can either be the smelter. Or smelter the is dependent upon your gold. Oh, never mind. Yeah, uh, conjurer. Conjure. Eleven magic. Sounds like magic. Take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. With your magic, you summon a large amount of supplies. With some effort, you're summoning more than enough lumber and food for the town. This helps with rebuilding effort a lot. I was trying to avoid magic when we started this. Then you so went magic. The fuck? But I still got magic. So what the fuck of these would be finesse? Probably Taylor. Could be looter as well. Or looter. <laughs> you right. <laughs> but I'm gonna go Taylor. He volunteered to weave and mend clothing for the survivors to keep warm. He make and mend clothing faster than anyone would have ever expected. Every survivor has now has now has an ex uh -huh. excess number of scarves, socks, and hats to keep warm. This helps the survival effort immensely. Will it be enough? And so we set about our task once more living our lives. This time in a way we might never have expected or even wanted. But in the end... It was a struggle, but a struggle we never abandoned. Though our home had been stripped apart, we did not let it languish. And whether we succeeded or fared, failed, we did our best. Who knows if the Yog will visit us again? Who knows if we will ever be, can ever be, ready for it? We fucking did it, boys. Town okay ending. We ain't I feel like there should have been a sex bump there. With the old tavern owner dying in the Yog, you decide to take on the task. Before long, the tavern's busier than ever, filled with good music, games, and friends. Your tavern's doing so great that every other tavern in the area has closed down. That's They're how poor. that works. You saw a chain of taverns throughout the city to fill the demand. Each new tavern you open makes it more difficult to manage all of them. You begin en enacting policies that make it easier for you to keep track of how the taverns are being run. The taverns all start to become bland and uninteresting places to be, but since you have a monopoly, you're still making ridiculous amounts of money. Social commentary. <laughs> they all changed you. Probably for the better. With the town being rebuilt, you eventually decide to retake your role as a doctor in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, that's right. actually something I did <laughs> multiple times. Alright, sure. <laughs> There you make friends with another doctor. It's me. The two of you do everything together. You're inseparable. Eventually, you even decide to get an apartment and live with each other. Go team minority. Mm -hmm. Then your friend gets married and everything changes. Oh. Their spouse has to move away to a new town and your friend follows. You try to, to keep in touch by mail. But the letters start to come less and less frequently. He try to fraternize, fraternize with the other doctors. I had to think for a second. While they're all nice people, nothing can compare. It's fucking sad, dude. That he abandoned Vinny. With the town being rebuilt, you take off to the forest to pursue your true calling. And what would that be, game? Demon summoning. You and your gang of merry fellows ambush nobles traveling in the <laughs> woods, demanding money for the poor. I'm fucking Robin Hood, let's go! Your group becomes local heroes for those living in the slums. Your legend is sung in taverns all across the land. Obviously. But I'm the Disney version, I'm a fox. Oh. Honestly, I'm afraid to touch the game. To like send it back to things. <laughs> the Why, extra bits on the overlay there aren't supposed to be there. <laughs> okay, it resets. Uh, do we want to run it again? Sure. So we have 30 minutes till James get back. Do we, I mean, do we have anything else we'd want to do? I don't know. 
I can't touch that. Fucking lethal. We can lethal company real fast. We could do a round of thunder real fast. You want to get that running? I'm down. I have mods installed. I'm down. Oh, wait. Now we can't. Why not? Actually, no, there's three of us. We can. I'll say there's only three of us. Yeah, we don't need the mod, the mod updated. I know I didn't send all the updated files. Okay, so we're done with Yuck. Yeah. All right, then. Cutting this recording.